Time travel is a tricky subject to talk about, considering that we can't do it yet and it might even be impossible, yet people still talk about it as if they know what they're talking about. Welcome to episode 19 of Dylan Explains Everything. My name's Dylan, and in case you couldn't tell by the title, I'm the one explaining everything, including the topic of today, time travel. I'm going to be running through a lot of facts, so if you're curious as to where I get my information, be sure to check the description below for a list of links. Like I said, time travel is interesting because we don't know what really happens, yet a lot of movie series and TV shows have attempted to explain it, so I'll be going through some of those. First of all, a little history on how time travel came to be so popular. We can trace its roots back to ancient Greek mythology, where gods and certain beings could travel between realms. Expanding on this, Norse mythology also had a tree that had nine realms on it, and you could travel between the realms using the tree or other methods. This all fed into the idea of traveling between realms or time. The first time time travel came up in literature was in 1895 with the book The Time Machine by H.G. Wells. In the book, a scientist makes a machine that takes him to the year 802,701, this sparked the idea for time travel throughout literature in the future. First time time travel appeared in literature was in 1895 with the book The Time Machine written by a guy named H.G. Wells. In the book, a scientist makes a machine that travels him to the future in the year 802,701. And since then, time travels appeared many times throughout literature and culture. This is because when we think of traveling at all, we have to think of a three-dimensional space. So our minds picture time as a three-dimensional space we can move around, or maybe even a two-dimensional space like a timeline. Theoretically speaking, if that were the case, we could move around the timeline just as easily as we can move through space, but this obviously isn't the case. Multiple scientific theories have come up as to how this could be accomplished. Basically, if we think of time as a fourth dimension added onto height, length, and width, we can use that with the theory of relativity to come up with a few theories on how it could work. In order to envision one of these theories, let's think of Earth. Earth is a large sphere. If you go east far enough, you'll eventually come back to where you started every time. If we think that time could be this way as well, where it's curved, we can then go along a point so much that we come back to where we started, moving us through time. Other scientists think of things called tachyons, which are basically objects that can move faster than the speed of light. None of them have been made or found yet, but scientists still think they could exist because of a property we've already found with things like rockets. When objects come close to the speed of light, they actually perceive time as going faster, meaning if you were inside a rocket going close to the speed of light, you would see everything going by super fast, but you wouldn't be aging that fast, so you could travel really far without wasting a lot of time. And this has already been proven, but I don't want to get into that. I want to talk about fictional stuff. The first and most obvious movie we can talk about is Back to the Future. The time logic in this movie actually makes a lot of sense, because when you go back in time and change something, you're put on a new course in time. For example, when Marty goes back in time and prevents his parents from meeting, it causes a new course of time where he and his siblings don't exist. Mapping out the first two movies is pretty hard with Back to the Future, but allow me to explain what all of this means. In the first movie, Marty goes back in time, which prevents his parents from ever meeting. This results in a future where there is no Marty McFly. So, he has to stay in that past in order to make a future where he is there. Now, eventually, he goes into the future during the second movie in order to save his kids. But during this time, future Biff gets a hold of a book that allows past Biff, when he goes back in time, to win a bunch of money through bets, resulting in him being rich. Marty then has to go back in time to prevent that from happening in a world where Biff is not rich. This all comes together to create a type of time travel I like to call the domino effect time travel, where when you go back in time and change something, it alters the future through chain reaction. Now, this isn't the only movie to do this. Peabody and Sherman also did this, but they showed what would happen if consequences started rising. In Mr. Peabody and Sherman, when they go back in time to a time after their own birth, there becomes two of them, or if they go back in time to a point where they've already gone back in time. 
If those two then interact, time basically can't handle having two of them at once, which creates a huge rift where a bunch of pieces from time start pouring into that one time. In X-Men Days of Future Past, they also play with this kind of logic. But if you're sent back in time, you go into your old body. And then these two times are going at the same time, your past and your present. But when you come back or wake up, suddenly everything updates and all the events that you did suddenly happen. Meet the Robinsons also has the domino effect type of time travel, where if you go into the future, you then know what's going to happen. So when you go back into the past, or rather the present, it changes things. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban also shows an interesting kind of time travel where no matter what you do, time still flows the exact same. If you go back in time and change things, you're not actually changing things. You were just oblivious to the fact that they didn't happen or did happen, and now you're making that happen. So no matter what, when you travel back in time, you actually don't have any free will up to the present. I think this is also why a lot of movies don't use this, because technically if you travel back in time, the entire time from the moment that you left all the way back to the moment you go to, you have no free will. You're only doing things that have technically already happened. The movie Groundhog Day also introduced an interesting kind of time travel that was replicated many times by many different movies later on. Basically, when you entered a certain point in time right here, you couldn't actually get out of this area unless you chose the right path. But there's so many paths that if you take the wrong one, it just sends you back to here. You're in this endless loop until you can find the right path that takes you out. Doctor Strange also uses this kind of time travel. Basically, he can set a point where if he dies any time after that, it'll just set him back to here until he eventually gets after a certain point where he's living. This allows him to create an endless loop of torturing his enemy. Doctor Strange also uses a certain type of time travel where you basically, instead of going through time and pushing yourself through time, you push time through something. So let's say you had an apple. You could actually push time through the apple in order to age the apple, but the apple isn't actually going to a different area in time. Time is going through it. Certain movies like Planet of the Apes or Ender's Game have a realistic form of time logic where the faster you go, the slower time appears for you. So everyone else is seeing you as going A more realistic form of time is in things like Plan of the Apes or Ender's Game, where the faster you go, the more time around you goes quicker, but you experience it slower. For example, you might experience something as 10 minutes, whereas the rest of everything else is only one minute. Some movies like X-Men Days of Future Past actually have the exact opposite of this logic, where instead of going faster makes time around you go faster, Going faster actually makes time around you appear to go slower, meaning you're basically perceiving everything quicker. Quicksilver does this in order to take down a whole room of people. The reason these are both technically correct is because in the backwards logic, you're actually just perceiving things very quickly and you're able to move very quickly. Whereas in the realistic logic, it's time that's changing, not you. The movie Megamind also plays with this, with its main hero, Metro Man, being able to interact with the world super quickly, meaning it appears really slow to him because he perceives it so quickly, allowing him to go all the way around the world if he wanted to, without time moving hardly at all. The movie Inception also uses a form of this kind of time travel, where basically if you go to sleep, you end up in the dream for years and years, when really it's only a few hours in the outside world. The TV show The Flash uses a lot of different kinds of time travel, which is a bit more realistic because they all intersect, causing a bunch of problems. First of all, if you go fast enough, time does appear to slow down because you're perceiving it so quickly. But also, if you go fast enough, you can go back in time or forward in time using the Meet the Robinsons or Back to the Future logic, which can also cause problems like changes in the future. This causes a lot of problems because if he can go back in time to cause events that change the future, enough of those cause so many different futures and so many hymns at one point in time, it causes a huge problem. 
The TV show also explores traveling through worlds like I mentioned before where you're able to travel to different forms of Earth. This isn't necessarily time travel, but it could be seen as that, as all it is is a different branch of time that you're jumping to. Phineas and Ferb, one of the best TV shows ever, deals with time travel too, and the episode where they do, it makes it very interesting and also confusing. Basically, in the normal timeline, Phineas and Ferb have to go to the future to get something, and then they go back, but their future sister Candace is able to go back in time and bust them, creating a universe where everything is ruled by Dr. Doofenshmirtz, the main villain of the show, and everything is awful. So Candace then has to go back in time and stop her future old whatever self to create a new universe where that doesn't happen and everything is okay. And then Candace gets to go back to the future where she belongs, but Isabella then goes back in time to give Phineas and Ferb the part that caused all of this, creating all of that to technically not have happened, but also happened because it did happen. And this creates a future world where none of that happened. This all goes to show that we have no idea what's going on with time travel, but we can definitely guess. However, some people actually don't even think time travel exists, that it's impossible. This is because, like I mentioned before, we envision time as a 2D, 3D, or even 1D space that we can move along, allowing us to travel to different parts of it. But according to these theories, time isn't that, but rather one solid point. There's no moving around in it because that would just be moving around space. It's an ever-changing point, just like space. This all goes with the idea that time isn't actually a real thing, but rather a human construct that allows us to explain the change in movement from one place to another. But according to science, time is a 2D, 3D, or 1D plane that allows us to move across it, allowing time travel to theoretically be possible. According to some people, you can actually use a black hole or a wormhole, which I've talked about in other episodes, to move through time. The idea is that if space and time are really so interconnected, moving through space should allow us in some cases to move through time. What we do know about black holes is that it causes us to have this weird sort of time travel where we perceive everything as speeding up when we're slowing down. Time is a really tricky subject to talk about because we don't really know a whole lot and a lot of it is subjective. We know that we can slow down time by going really fast, but we don't know if we can speed up time, go back in time, or forward in time. With all that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's video just as much as The Flash likes traveling through time. And if you did, be sure to let me know and stick around for next week's video, which always comes out Saturday at 10 a.m. And if you have any thoughts, questions, or suggestions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And remember, my name's Dylan, and I explain everything. <laughs>